The fifth generation Corvette, or what collectors refer to generally as C5s, were redesigned from the ground up after sales from the previous C4 generation began to decline. Production of this redesigned Corvette actually began in 1996, but various issues related to manufacturing and final build quality ultimately delayed the initial public debut until the 1997 model year. The C5 would continue with few changes until the end of 2004. This totally new from the ground up American sports car would be a completely updated design and feature many new innovations, concepts, and manufacturing techniques that would ultimately be carried into the C6 and C7 models as well. The C5 would only be available as a coupe in its first year, although the new platform was designed from the ground up to be a convertible. Finally, in 1998, the convertible appeared in this generation for the first time. In 1999, engineers had finished the design of the fixed roof coupe. One initial concept for the fixed roof coupe was for it to be a stripped down model and was to be powered by a base V6 engine with a V8 optional. The engineers named this concept car Billy Bob and thankfully, at least as far as Corvette purists are concerned, never materialized. There has not been a six cylinder Corvette since the end of the 1954 car's production run. A major change from its immediate C4 predecessor, the new C5 utilized a hydroform box frame, a design that offered improved structural integrity, especially for a convertible. Relative to the C4, this new platform and structural design substantially reduced squeaks and rattles. This new chassis also kept the weight down on these cars, eliminating the required government mandated gas guzzler tax which most of the other cars in the Corvette's class had to pay. The official curb weight was under 3,300 pounds. Chevrolet even went so far as to omit the spare tire and jack assembly as a weight saving measure, relying instead upon new technology run flat tires, which could go as far as 200 miles before requiring any attention. This also increased cargo space to 13.9 cubic feet. The C5 also had a low drag coefficient, so it was very aerodynamic. In addition to the chassis, lightening the car wherever possible was the goal. Structural integrity was still of the utmost concern. The C5's modular body panels used a lightweight composite material known in the automotive industry as SMC or sheet molded composite. It's a space age type of fiberglass that is blended and bonded with plastics. SMC also provides better protection against damage because it's very stiff and won't dent easily. Another huge factor as to why these cars were surprisingly fuel efficient, even considering the just seen C4 cars, was a vehicle's tendency to electronically upshift into the higher gears as soon as possible. If a driver was manually shifting the newly designed Borg Warner 6 speed, a feature called computer aided gear shifting resulted in an obligatory shift from first gear directly into fourth gear under certain driving conditions. The system can easily be deactivated through aftermarket power control module tuning. For the new 5th gen Corvette, engineers made the car longer and wider than its predecessor. Relocating the transmission to the rear axle produced the desired balanced result with a 51-49% weight distribution. This equal distribution of weight would result in an automobile that was better balanced and better equipped to handle the rigors of even the most aggressive drivers. This concept required the wheels be relocated to the corners, which increased the wheelbase for a nicer ride brought the front to rear weight ratio almost even, and gave the car a very modern appearance. The wheelbase had been increased from 96.2 inches to 104.5 inches. The overall length increased from 178.5 inches to 179.6 inches. The width increased from 70.7 inches 
to 73.6 inches. The height increased from 46.3 inches to 47.8 inches and the track width had been extended 4.4 inches in the front and 2.9 inches at the rear. Since this 5th gen Corvette was all new and on the cutting edge of the newest technology, it was only fitting that an all new generation 3 small block engine called the LS1 would motivate this sports car into the new millennium. It was an all aluminum engine featuring individual ignition coils for each cylinder and was initially rated at 345 horsepower and 350 foot-pounds of torque. Because it was under constant development by engineers to power other GM vehicles as well, by 2001 power increased to 350 horsepower. This revolutionary new engine combined with a lighter and more aerodynamic body and composite suspension components all added up to a car that was able to achieve up to 28 miles per gallon on the highway if properly equipped and driven. One of the more popular high-tech options introduced for the C5 Corvette was a heads-up display. This allowed the driver to continue to see the car's instrumentation without taking his or her eyes off the road. Another amazing innovation was the active handling system, first available as an option for 1998, and then it became standard equipment on all 2001 and newer models. The C5 was also the first Corvette to incorporate a drive-by-wire throttle assembly, eliminating the old cable system, which would often stretch, break, or bind. Another welcomed technological innovation was variable effort steering, whereby the assist level of the power steering is varied according to vehicle speed. More at lower speeds, less at higher speeds. Finally, the C5 generation was the first model to adopt the parallel or tandem windshield wiper configuration, abandoning the opposed configuration that was used on every previous Corvette model since the first one in 1953. Because of all these new features, Motor Trend Magazine named the Corvette Car of the Year in 1998, a distinct and prestigious honor and also this year, the Indianapolis 500 selected the Corvette to pace its 82nd annual race, held on May 24, 1998. The pace car package is widely regarded as being one of the more controversial and over-the-top appearance packages ever offered on a Corvette especially as an interior-exterior combination. The well-respected organization known as the Society of Automotive Engineers, in their member-only publication called Automotive Engineering International, selected the 1999 Corvette Convertible, along with the incredible Mercedes-Benz S500, as the best engineered cars of the 20th century. Wow, that's quite an endorsement which is a testament to how an American car company can engineer and produce a world-class car and at a fraction of what other comparable cars cost at the time. By 2000 it was decided that the lighter and more rigid fixed roof coupe bodies would be used exclusively for the return in 2001 of the legendary Z06. They were lighter in weight than the other offerings and had less body flex for better handling and braking. This year, an exciting new design for an alloy wheel became available. Engineers designed a lighter and more efficient engine for the newest version of the Z06. Instead of using a heavier dual overhead cam engine like the ZR1 of the C4 generation, the Z06 used an LS6, an upgraded design of the LS1, to put 385 fire-breathing horses under that fiberglass hood. By using the much more rigid fixed roof design, the Z06 experienced unprecedented handling thanks to upgraded brakes and suspension componentry. All of these improved characteristics, along with the use of such cutting-edge materials such as titanium for the exhaust system and a, finally a carbon fiber hood in the 2004 model year led to further performance gains for the C5 Z06. The exciting news for 2003 was the year that marked a milestone in Corvette history, the 50th anniversary. It would be available on base coupe 
and convertible models only, and they were only available in one color, Anniversary Red Metallic. They also came with painted aluminum wheels and special badging. It was well received by collectors who wanted to commemorate such a noteworthy accomplishment. For its final year as a C5 edition, Chevrolet made a 24 Hours of Le Mans commemorative edition to recognize that America's first sports car had raced at this iconic event for years now. Speaking of race-only C5 Corvettes, this new platform proved to be very adaptive for racing. The C5R is a grand touring track car built by Pratt and & Miller and General Motors for competition in endurance racing. It has become one of the most dominant cars in various GT categories, with wins at the 24 Hours of Daytona, 12 Hours of Sebring, and 24 Hours of Le Mans, as well as championships in the American Le Mans series. The C5Rs debuted in 1999 and continued to be raced to this day, although the C5R has effectively been replaced by the Corvette C6R. The C5 was produced in relatively high numbers throughout its lifespan, nearly 250,000 cars, which means that there aren't many versions of the car that are considered especially rare or special. Only one engine was used for the standard Corvette and only one for the Z06, which makes it different than Corvettes before that had rare cars with special engine options. These cars are still relevant for people who like a car that's vintage, yet reliable. With so many cars to choose from, prices have stabilized and now are affordable to enthusiasts from all income levels. I was able to find out that Chevrolet produced 2,995 convertibles in 1998 in Torch Red, just like our feature car from last Sunday. For further information on all things Corvette, please consult the website www. Dot .corvsport.com Two retro design features that the C5 brought back from years past is the obvious coves on each side right behind the front wheels and the waterfall trim piece between the two bucket seats. Since I love old school design, I noticed these things immediately. Ending production on July 2nd, 2004, the C5 became the last generation of Corvette to use hidden pop-up headlamps. I hope you've enjoyed this feature on the C5 Corvettes. I think the wildest model of the series is the pace car. What do you think of it? Love it or hate it? Let me know in the comments and be sure to like and share this video with other car enthusiasts. Subscribe if you haven't done so already so you don't miss any of our twice weekly videos. We appreciate all of our viewers and subscribers. Join us next week as we bring you one of the coolest cars to come out of the 70s, a 77 Pontiac Can-Am. Like all of our features, this one has an intriguing story and has been very well preserved for well over four decades now. See you next Sunday, and remember, stay safe out there.